108, and we are back on the last item. Because we already did item 23 earlier. That's right. So, so this is to consider a draft letter requesting the California Department of Housing and Community Development to postpone the final regional housing needs determination for the Bay Area, provide any input and or authorize the letter to be sent on behalf of the city. Um, can we have a staff report? Hello, who's doing this? Ben's talking and you can't, we can't hear him. Okay, Ben. We're having some technology issues apparently. How about now? Yeah. Okay. Perfect, sorry about that. Um, thank you for the introduction, Mr. Mayor. We do not have a uh, Power, PowerPoint slideshow for you. We do have a, a brief uh, staff report attached that was kind of modified from the last uh, meeting with a similar attachments. Like you introduced uh, this item, this is uh, for the council to review the draft letter by the mayor and the vice mayor, uh, and then decide as, as a council whether you want to uh, authorize the mayor to send a letter or not. Of course, we're here if you have any questions. Thank you. So does everybody have a copy of the letter? It was a, provided as a desk item. Uh, so where do I find it? In the email? I believe it was emailed included. It was included in the same email sent by Lauren at 5.15 p.m. today. Actually, 6.22. Was it? Yeah, so I can, uh, if I may, Mr. Mayor, I can project the letter on my screen. I found it. It's OK. Essentially, the summary of the letter is that they're proposing to write to the governor with a copy up to HCD, uh, to HCD and the governor at the same time, uh, asking them to delay so that there's more time and consideration for the determination. And then they have supporting information that, uh, that would support that request. That's, that's the body of the letter. Okay. Um, well, I'm not, Steve, I don't know if you're muted, but uh, if you stepped out, then I'll go ahead and, and move. Oh, sorry. No, I am muted. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So, uh, like I said, ABAG, sorry, Cities Association has sent a similar letter already. Um, a lot of this is COVID related, but not all of it. Um, we don't know the impact of COVID, but it appears it will have a long term impact on how both housing and commercial real estate and we really need to um you know step back and see what the actual effects are going to be before we impose these kind of numbers on the region uh the other issue is uh we're trying to build more affordable housing and these unreasonable numbers will actually make that harder because as we fail to meet our numbers, uh, SB 35 will kick in. Our BMR requirements, including the inclusionary requirement, will go out the window. Um, we'll get small units, we'll get a lower percentage, we'll be built to a lower standard. Uh, we'll end up once again with no units for families. And you know we really need to step back. So you can read the letter. Um, you know, minor changes are fine, but we're not going to sit here and, and write this letter by committee. I think we have a member of the public 
Uh, who would like to speak? Oh, okay. Yeah, let me um, go over to that section. Why can't I? Oh, because it's um. Yeah, one second. I have to fix this. Okay, for attendee seven. Okay, Jennifer, welcome. Um, yes. Uh, <clears throat> hello, Mayor. Um, can you all hear me? Oh yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, uh, we have to send this letter. I am tired of being a hamster on a wheel, getting nowhere. We are, um, we've lived this drama for three years now with the massive housing bills. They keep pointing at Cupertino, hitting us with the stick, and then we get SB 35 biting us back too. I'm really tired of it. It's getting old. We can see through it. Um, I have serious questions about how a bag executive committee is made up, their relationship with the MTC, the relationship with the, the impossible arena numbers. We knew they would be sky high. They didn't count on the pandemic and it sounds like they're just ignoring it. We had LinkedIn laid off a thousand people, I guess today or recently. We're gonna have more things happening. This is not the time to be saddling the Bay Area with half a million housing units. I'm really, really getting tired of living in a city where we're being told that we don't have any right to make our own decisions. They are after CEQA, they're after our land. They are, they are abusing suburban people and they're abusing the smaller cities. It has to stop and it stops. I mean, Palo Alto, three of their city, city council members wrote a letter. I think we need to write a letter and I'm glad that we're CCing the governor and HCD and ABAG and everyone else because it has to stop. It is abuse of people that live in cities that are not Oakland, San Francisco or Sacramento. I'm tired of it. Let's send a message and let's start investigating why we have been put on this hamster wheel. I know why, but let's get the word out. Please send it immediately. This has to stop. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. So we will bring it back to council for discussion and a vote. Um, let's see who would want to go first. How about Leon? You go first. Okay, so uh, one sentence here 2019 analysis found that BMR inclusionary requirements beyond these levels, you mean 20% uh, of ownership would be economically infeasible? Well, Mountain View requires 25%, so you can really say it's, I think that's not, this sentence is not necessary. So oh, just, just that one sentence. That's in second page. Yeah, right, right, not, right. I'm looking at that. that sentence now. Um, we are making excuse for them. We don't need that. Yeah, I, I can. I think uh, beyond. Yeah, I can go. I can go along with that. We're removing that sentence. In San Francisco, they even require forty percent at some places. They are able to do that. So it's there are different conditions. So don't make excuse for them. Okay. Another comment is, I don't know if you mentioned the, uh, the funding for BMRU housing, because all we can require is 15%, 20% BMR um, with market rate. But in order to actually build all that Brina allocation need, we need funding to fund 100% BMR housing. Where is that funding? Without the funding, how can they mandate something they don't fund? 
where is the funding? Did you mention? They mandate things they don't fund all the time. Yeah, that's why you need to mention. They cannot mandate it without providing us the funding for below market rate. It's subsidized housing. Who subsidized it? The city cannot. The state has to. If they don't give us enough funding to subsidize these units, don't mandate that many. But oh, Darcy, did we have that in there and take that out? If I recall correctly, it was in there. It was in there. In right, there. and then we removed it. Yeah, it was it got Find it. trying to cut it down a little bit. Well, to try and perhaps ha head off the editing while on the dais thing, it we need the memo is already pretty long, so I would ask that council try and just decide to pass it or not, vote on it as to whether to send it or not and then just provide some editorial license for the mayor and vice mayor to do a quick edit before it being sent. Because I think that's the key. They keep blaming us. They keep blaming us when they don't give us money. They keep cutting this, cutting that, and then saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, but then they don't give us funding for BMR housing. Okay, I would agree to add a line regarding funding the loss of redevelopment, the failure of last year's SB5, which would have provided the funding, and this year's SB95. Maybe we put in a plug for SB795, which is Tim Bell's replacement for last year's vetoed SB5. And to the legislator's credit, legislature's credit, which I don't usually do, they did pass SB5. Five and it was just vetoed by the governor. Oh my God! Right? They have to mention that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but we got to really be careful about. You know, it's already too long. Um, no. So, you might want to focus on your top, like your top three supporting arguments, and just focus it that way. Because also the goal is you want someone to read this, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I know. Right. It's just going to be really difficult to weave in every single little knit you want. What you want to do is if you want if you want it to have an impact by somebody reading it, you, you discussed your top three arguments. Well, I think putting our top three at the top is yeah. fine. And then, you know, further down, we can put all the other stuff that maybe nobody reads. <laughs> but but we get it out there for the public to read as well. Sure. Um, okay. So, what's so yeah, please give us some editorial license. Um, I like those two ideas, removing the line about the 2019 analysis. It is true that different cities have different, um, have found different requirements uh, tenable. And then adding a couple of lines about funding for affordable housing, um, loss of redevelopment, et cetera. Um, anything else? It's one twenty-one. What? Um, Council Member Willie, do you, do you have comments or feedback? Um, so I glanced through the letter and it looks pretty good. My question would be, and I, I really don't know if this would be good or not good. But, you know, I would toss out, you know, uh, putting a CC to Ro Khanna, putting a CC to our uh, uh, congressman. Um, you know, let, let, you know, the, the people besides uh, Newsom, you know, be aware of what's going on here. And if we, if we really keep it just Newsom and, and the cities, you, you know, it, it seems like, you know, he's got his, his man, his objective that he's going to build all this housing like, like it or not, but he's not the end all. You know, the residents, you know, the residents elected are, are senators, are representatives, and they need to, you know, be also holding him accountable <clears throat> that he's not a one, a one man show. It, you know, he, so, so that's my comment in put CC at the bottom with all of these so that he sits there and he sees, hopefully, you know, um, 
they would weigh in in some way, shape, or form. But would it anger him? You know, well, they're going over my head type thing. I, I don't know. Somehow, I, I do think we need to be aligning our uh, congressmen. Yeah, that's fine. I don't think Ro Khanna has much influence over um, HCD, but, you know, it doesn't cost anything extra to include him on the letter. Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion that we authorize the mayor to um, work within the subcommittee to uh, edit in accordance to the input provided uh, here uh, under this item and that we authorize the mayor to send the letter. Okay. Seconded. Uh, who seconded? John. Okay, um, so more discussion. Rod, did you want to weigh in? I know that you're not. I think, I think he left. Oh, Rod left. Okay, well, that makes it easier then. Okay. Um, I really wish people wouldn't leave without at least saying they're leaving. But anyway, um, okay, so let, let's conduct a vote then. Council Member Chow? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Paul? Aye. Mayor Scher? Aye. Motion carries with sinks absent. Okay, let's go back to the agenda. Hold on, let me back up. You're at the end. We're at the end. How is that possible? Um, it's only 125. Um, okay. All right, we are on to council and staff comments and future agenda items. So is there any more council and staff comments? Do you want to go around? Um, I, um, let's see, but I think we should, given the number of people that spoke on it, I think we sh should, um, talk about the crosswalk in a future meeting and see if it's possible. I know J.R. Fruin gave a lot of input, um, regarding, um, his views of the legality. So I hope that our staff could look into that and we can bring this forward on a future agenda item. I did, you know, I was kind of upset <laughs> at some of the things that were said, but, you know, as Deb pointed out, you know, people can say whatever they want um, during oral communications. Um, it's not as simple as some people would think to do something like this, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so that's my only comment on that, but I'm perfectly happy to put it in on the agenda and if this is possible to do you know uh, all in favor and I, and I think the misunderstanding you know jr fruin had talked to the city manager about this a long time ago and you know i don't i don't know what actually happened with it and then you know, i thought it was moving sorry. forward and then we got the petition and it was like yeah the petition's nice but we're already doing this um, I never got the petition. I only got the follow-up to the petition. I never got okay. the petition. petition. Oh, right, I know. So are there two to put it on the agenda? No, it only needs me. Okay. But I'm sure someone else would do uh, it too. Okay, go ahead. Also, I think it's important, even though it's public comments, but it's important if people are giving out misinformation that we should immediately correct them. Because if you wait, people will misunderstand and then that just builds up um, negative um, feeling about the city. So for the image of the city, we should correct when people, I think someone told all these people that the city is stalling. When this person didn't really do a good job of outreach to all the council members. So they kind of feel they are being stalled. When they didn't reach out to all the council members, the staff cannot make decision on these kind of things. The staff can help. So they should, it's some, there's some miscommunication there. We need to correct this kind of yeah. miscommunication. Uh, in a way I agree, and then, but in a way, starting to argue with people during oral communications because they're not 
providing accurate information. I don't know if that's I'm arguing the... we need to correct provide correct information. It comes off as arguing and so it starts to kind of impinge on people's right to express. That's mm -hmm. well, yeah, I mean I, I I'm willing to refer to staff members sure. like I did today with referring to Roger to explain, you know, what the law is, even if you know I mean I got the feeling is everyone understood they were not legal, but the issue was other cities were not following the code, so why couldn't Cupertino also? No, the issue is, I just learned about this today. Last right. week there was this one letter, so I didn't pay attention. And now I'm being, being accused of stalling something that I didn't even know. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I feel, I feel really, what are you guys doing? This is, it's not like we don't want to do it. We, you need to keep, this city process takes time. You cannot say you request and then it has to happen to, tomorrow. This is not how things work. They need to understand that. And also that for this item, I'm wondering whether we can also consider, I think in San Jose, I see that they have kind of mural-like painting in the middle of okay, the- Okay, right. Leon, this will be on the agenda. We can't discuss it here. The, I, I know. So, in addition to crosswalk, can the agenda also look into the option of putting in the middle of the uh, intersection a uh, mural? So maybe sure. okay. would that be then be safer than uh, obscuring the crosswalk? Uh, well, if you read the law, you know things that will divert attention are the issue. Um, anyway. That's why can, in the middle of the intersection may be the wrong diaper. But we can discuss this in the agenda item, not here. Okay. Um, so is there anyone else that has a, other agenda items or other um, comments? Well, my, my comment, you know, when we had that many people speak on that and, and make those statements about Cupertino, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to sit here and, and get in a... Uh, a ruckus with with uh, you, Steve. But I would like to have you know had you know ten or fifteen seconds to simply you know say, hey, I do support doing things in our community that the community as a whole supports us to do. With the amount of uh, interest that was displayed here tonight, that I support uh, city staff you know, clearly looking at what are the uh, legalities of doing it and getting community uh, confirmation. But, you know, that's all I have to do so that the residents sit there and say, well, the city council isn't as bad as we're saying, but again, you don't like us to say anything when the residents during during their uh, communication and so well i mean i think i think what we did was refer it to roger to look in to see if there's a way to do it legally but if 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 you were open to us you know taking 15 or 20 seconds the residents would be hearing that wow the city council really is not the is ogre that we're making them out to be they're saying that they do support things like this, as long as they're going to uh, be supported by the community and that they meet the legality. We don't want uh, people being run over by cars because drivers are distracted, or we don't want to violate uh, the thousand feet to the school. And so we can go and accommodate these things in, in a way, and just letting the residents know well, they all left. They all came and they all left. And they don't know that I, I'm sensitive to what they're talking about. So in the future, you know, if you are open to, to that, you know, I would like on, on occasion when it's a, uh, uh, an important issue to enough residents to come and speak, we, sh we should be able to, you know, take just a, uh, a minute or half a minute. So that's my feedback. Wait, you said 10 or 15 seconds and now it's up to half a minute or a minute. So if we, you know, this is the problem with oral. It can't, 
you know, it can go on for hours if we all start commenting on each person's statements. I, I think you want sort of like I'm not about speaking and I don't read. Um, hey, John, I'm, I'm John, sorry. John, we can't, we can't hear you your anymore. Your audio is going really bad, so I don't know what's happening. I think he meant that when we have so many people talking, we are actually spending 30 minutes listening to the same type of comments. Well, I know a lot of, I that? mean, a lot of them just repeated the exact I same know. thing. They had a script. But it's important to address that right away to allow each com council member to comment because there is so much emotion there that would help. Well, that's why we put things on an agenda so we can discuss it and each council member can weigh in. So can we can we move on to yes okay items? future agenda items anybody else have a future agenda item so you had the weight control thing oh right we did want to look into seeing about uh, modifying the weed abatement procedure where you know I guess the city would have to fund the first um, and the that's already inspection. on our list. Which okay, it's already future on our agenda list. items. Oh, that, that's true. We put that on a long time ago, didn't we? Oh, really? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. So we we look at what Saratoga does. Someone keeps saying they have a softer method. Yeah, I don't know what they have. Yeah, we can. Maybe I'll ask that at the our mayor's meeting on um, tomorrow. On third, it's tomorrow. Oh God. Wednesday. You mean, you mean today? Today. It's later today. <laughs> And I'm not okay. going to make it if we don't wrap up soon. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Darcy, you have any agenda items? No, I have nothing further. Thank you. Okay. John, agenda items? No, no, no. Okay. John, you need a new computer. Okay. Um, Leong, any other agenda items? No. All right. Great. Thank you, everybody. Adjourned. <laughs>